Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the ENCODE users meeting virtual this year, unfortunately. Um, my name is Annika, and I'm the ENCODE project manager in Professor Mike Snyder's lab at Stanford in California. And um, he already gave a great scientific talk yesterday, and I will today give you an overview of our production center here at Stanford, what we are doing, <clears throat> which data sets we are making available to the research community, and what our goals are. Our projection center is led by Professor Mike Snyder together with Professor Greenleaf and Professor Chang here at Stanford. Uh, we are working very closely together with our collaborators at Northwestern University in Chicago and with two surgeons at Washington's, uh, Washington University and University of Washington. Um, although our ability to, uh, to determine the genome sequence of individuals is the is becoming easier. Our understanding of the function of most of the human genome is still limited. And mapping of regulatory information is particularly crucial since most um, common variants associated with human diseases lay outside of uh, coding regions. Um, we are mainly performing three major assays in our lab. Um, we map the transcription uh, factor binding sites uh, using chromatin immunoprecipitation of tagged transcription factors. Um, and we expand the catalog of regulatory elements by analyzing open chromatin regions. Um, finally, we also map open chromatin regions in single cells um, from these type of biosamples. Um, and we believe that these studies greatly expand the catalog of regulatory uh, regions in the human genome. Um, during my um, rather short presentation today, I will give you an overview of how we are mapping transcription factor sites and what is available for further analysis by, ENCODE, uh, by the ENCODE portal for users. Um, I will give you a short overview of our open chromatin assay efforts, and I will end by giving you some information about the biosamples that we chose uh, and collected, and how those are processed within the ENCODE uh, consortium in an integrative effort to maximize assay space. So let's talk about, let's, let's start with the transcription factor uh, chip. <clears throat> the transcription factor working group consists of mainly two ENCODE production centers, ours in Stanford, and the lab of Rick Myers and Eric Mendenhall at Hudson Alpha in Alabama. And the objectives of our production center um, are um, create a global comprehensive transcription factor binding site catalog, identify enriched DNA binding motives, um, we try to expand the catalog of regulatory DNA currently obscured by cellular heterogeneity and reveal accessibility variation. We try to uncover regulatory elements by comparing a large number of different normal and diseased human samples. Um, and we develop novel methods and standards for best practices and make them available for the research community. Um, we have a transcription factor list uh, curated from various annotation databases using a variety of criteria, such as known motive or DNA binding domain. Um, this list contains about 1,600 transcription factors. About 1,300 of those have a TPM um, over one. So those are the ones that we are primarily focusing on, obviously for um, experimental and technical reasons. We analyze transcription factor expression from RNA-seq um, data sets that were previously generated by ENCODE. And we determined the cell types uh, which have the broadest aggregate set of transcription factor expression to allow for the maximization of element discovery. So currently, we are um, expressing transcription factors in uh, the following cell lines, K562, A549, SK, NSH. MCF7, WTC11, PGP1, and GM12878, and uh, HEPG2. Uh, this doesn't, of course, necessarily mean that the experiments work best in the cell line where the transcription factor is expressed highest. Um, so we try alternatives in this case, of course, um, to provide a comprehensive map. Uh, as of now, our production center submitted about 1,800 chip, chip uh, seq data sets that are available. Um, in this round and previous rounds of ENCODE, and there are um, sorry, there are uh, about um, 4,600 um, chip uh, seq data sets um, in total. 
Um, the limiting factor in ChIP-seq experiment is usually the availability of um, highly specific antibodies. Um, it's time consuming, it's expensive to um, create de novo antibodies and to screen commercially available antibodies uh, for use in ChIP-seq. Um, in our production center, we tag transcription factors with GFP using CRISPR-Cas for this um, aforementioned reason. Um, and our colleagues at Hudson Alpha use a FLAC tag instead of the GFP tag. Um, transcription factors along with their associated um, DNA are immunopurified using antibodies um, uh, for GFP and the transcription factor bound DNA is sequenced. And we have uh, successfully demonstrated in the past that um, antibodies against GFP, HA and flag tech can all be successfully used in ChIP-seq. Um, our data sets uh, uh, usually uh, consist of two independent cultures of cells, like two biological replicates of 10 to 20 million cells, and um, peaks of tag transcription factors are scored for enrichment relative to input controls. I'll come back to this later. So for epitope tagging of transcription factors, we perform two characterization methods that both must pass for validation of our ChIP-seq results um, in order to be released. Uh, first, we validate the insertion of our tag by PCR. Here's an example of transcription factor um, FOXS1, which is, um, so the, the characterization is called genetic modification characterization. I'm using those um, terms here because this is how you can find it on the portal. Um, so I think it makes sense to use those throughout the um, presentation. Um, in addition to that, we uh, add the biosample characterization, which is a Western blot with a GFP antibody. In our case, a flag tag antibody for our colleagues at Hudson Alpha um, to confirm that the transcription factor is expressed and the full size protein, another truncated version of the protein, is present in our cells. Um, for details, please refer to the ENCODE um, experimental guidelines on the portal or ask me um, or my colleagues. Um, I'd like to mention here that we uh, deposit our constructs at EdGene. So if they're pro properly validated and the chip uh, seek experiment is successful and released, um, we send all our constructs to EdGene. Um, yeah, so once we have all the validations and sequencing results, metadata submitted to our data coordination center and everything is reviewed, um, the data sets are released for the user and can be easily queried on the, on the website, which um, looks like this. Um, an amazing feature of ENCODE is that the raw data is actually processed by uniform pipelines, which not only makes the data available for more researchers, but also easier to compare data sets, of course. Um, you can see here that you, you see the transcription factor. Um, you can uh, uh, choose the experiment. Uh, you see which lab, um, you know, like in case there is a flag or an audit, um, you see which cell line was used. Um, the data quality is assessed by a variety of means, um, which has been built into our standard analysis pipelines. Um, so duplicate, duplicate reads are removed uh, usually and mapped reads are scored. Typically only unique non-repetitive reads are subjected to peak calling. Um, QC scores include non-redundant reads in an experiment like NRF um, and enrichment of signal in peak like FRIP scores. Um, for high quality experiments, um, then cross correlation analysis for strand distribution, um, uh, and then also the number of reproducible peaks uh, scored uh, that, that is scored using IDR. <clears throat> so, this is more a, a general overview of how the ChIP-seq pipeline looks. If you click on an example on the portal, this is an example for only the uh, for replicate one, but of course this exists for replicate two and for the wild type controls as well. Um, on the portal itself, you can click on these little arrows here to get additional um, information on um, this step in the pipeline. And you can also click on these green little um, uh, dots here, and then you can get information of, for instance, which software was used to do the peak calling, um, certain metadata um, or quality metrics. <clears throat> like, uh, for instance, IDR um, uh, or reproducible peaks, number of peaks. 
I mentioned that we are using GFP um, and our colleagues at Hudson Alpha use FlagTech for te tagging transcription factors. And in previous rounds of ENCODE, our production center used native antibodies. Um, so using a common epitope to tag different transcription factors has many advantages. It only requires one antibody to be validated, which uh, can then be used to study um, a lot of transcription factors in the human genome. Furthermore, since this epitope is not coded within the genome, um, pot potential antibodies can quickly be screened for nonspecific interaction on, on modified cells. Um, comparing uh, these data sets like native antibody versus FLAC versus GFP and then native versus GFP and, you know, um, uh, all kinds of comparison showed that actually um, in both cases, regardless, um, uh, the, the overlap is pretty high. So we think that, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a valid approach uh, for us. Okay. Um, currently, um, our production uh, center and Hudson Alpha production groups, they use, we use different uh, methods in generating and applying background, background controls for our experiments. Um, so um, sometimes when you click on a transcription factor data set on the portal, you see that some data sets have um, two controls. Um, so one of those controls is um, the pooled input, rep1 and rep2 pooled. The other one is the untagged uh, Y-type cell line um, that is used as a Y-type control here. So the question, of course, for us was, is there a significant difference in p-calling performance based on uh, the type of background control that, that we use? And um, the strongest... Um, uh, um, and as I hypothesized, most of the variance in peak calling among the different background controls resides within the weakest peak. Um, so, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not showing all the data here now, but um, there is actually no better performing control, which um, this is sometimes you find both, uh, sometimes you find only one on the portal. Um, so chip, ChIP-seq has um, numerous advantages um, over general mapping of open chromatin regions, um, which are potential uh, regulatory regions, of course, and it enables proper assignment of the transcription factor to specific uh, genomic regions. Uh, in contrast, high-resolution mapping of open regions to identify footprints can identify mo motives and um, can be suggestive of classes of transcription factor binding regions. Um, open chromatin mapping is a single assay that can really be formed on uh, many cell types, enabling a broad survey of regulatory information in many different tissues and cell types. Um, we are performing um, bulk attack and also single cell attack in our um, production center um, to complement our uh, transcription factor um, chip seq data sets. Um, so attack seq is a very sensitive and accurate probe of open chromatin, and um, the, uh, exper the, the data sets that are available from our production center are all the cell lines that we use for chip and um, other cell lines, uh, um, um, bulk, both bulk and single cell attack. But then we also do a lot of attack and single cell attack on primary cells and tissues from human. So I would uh, like to transition quickly um, into um, presenting you what kind of tissues we were collecting for ENCODE 4 and um, what we did with those tissues. Um, so our collaborators uh, at Washington University and uh, uh, University of Washington, they uh, collected a variety of human tissues. Um, uh, mainly from 16 donors. Uh, they are healthy and with cardiac, uh, cardiac diseases. Uh, we have a variety of tissues and organs, uh, diverse age and disease state. Um, they are high quality and suitable for single cell resolution, which is very um, which is very exciting for us. <laughs> um, then explicitly consented for genomic uh, data sharing, explicitly consented for sharing with other researchers, which of course is important for a project um, like ENCODE. And they are explicitly consented, consented for immortalization, reprogramming, and um, really important for us as well is that they are high quality, as you can see here. Um, for instance, uh, the RIN score, uh, it's, it's very good. Um, 
so high quality data um, of uh, your high quality tissues, uh, variety of different tissues, as you can see here, this is only a short um, a summary, we, we do have more than that. Um, high quality means um, we can do a lot of different essays on those and um, I'd like to mention here that there's a huge collaborative effort within ENCODE um, of the so-called biosample working group to collect many different essays on these tissues and also other uh, biosamples that were collected by other production centers that are part of the ENCODE 4 uh, project. Um, so I'm, I'm just listing some of the um, uh, labs and um, mapping centers here on the right. Um, uh, many people involved in this, um, but we do have data sets on the same tissue for different assays such as a histone chip, a um, and chip, um, you know, chip seek, then assays for DNA accessibility like attack and single cell attack and DNAs, uh, a lot of um, assays concerning RNA um, and also 3D chromatin structure. Um, so to sum up, um, what we think is the most exciting feature of our data is um, the combination of transcription factor epitope tech, uh, chip seek and the attack seek on these cell types. And I think those two provide a complementary data um, um, that, that is very exciting for the research community. So it is uh, the depth of the transcription factor, the, the um, high resolution, but then also the breadth of um, uh, yeah, bark attack and single cell attack on, on many tissues uh, in concert with many um, different assays from many different um, groups uh, that are all available at the ENCODE portal uh, for analysis. And uh, yeah, so uh, many data sets, many people involved. Um, I, there are probably <laughs> people missing here on this slide too. So uh, yeah, many people at Stanford and our collaborators at Northwestern uh, Washington University, University of Washington are our two uh, surgeons that collect really high quality tissues for us that are open consented. Um, our colleagues at Hudson Alpha um, and then the ENCODE uh, Biosample Working Group and of course NIH for great support and uh, their funding. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention and um, I'm happy to share any questions, answer any questions. <laughs>